Hello. This is a little test. I want to say hi to all my Facebook friends. And, um, well, I'm thinking of doing some videos, teaching videos, and I'm just really messing about to check it out. So, what can I say? Well, there's one of Minarepa's songs, for instance, where a monk wants to come up to see him. The monk's never seen him before, he's heard about him, and he's a monk in a monastery, he's got all that stuff, you know, prayers, tormas, bells, rituals, reads texts, very devoted, excellent, really very, very good. And when he goes up to see Milarepa, who is living in a cave, he comes in and he looks round. And he sees there's nothing. And in particular, there's no shrine, no Buddha statues, no texts. And his first thought, because Milarepa's not young, is if this old man dies, there's not even a Buddha statue to bless him. Of course, Milarepa knew immediately what he was thinking. And so then he tells him, he sings him a song and tells him in that song that although he doesn't have any books, life itself is the very, very best of books. And certainly for him, it's his main book that he studies night and day. And then he doesn't have any images. But he says that wherever he goes is his temple. Whoever he meets is a Buddha. He sees the Buddha in them. So he doesn't need metal, wooden, clay images because he relates to the kindness, the wisdom, the potential that's in each and every one of us. So, in this way, he concludes that, you know, if I die, there'll be nobody in this world happier than me, because I've found that. There's also one other bit in the story. It's a little bit more subtle, secret, because he's mastered all of these channels and chakras and inner things. And when you do that, apparently, there's no more difference between inside you, inside your mind, and the outer world. And there's mastery of the outer world through mastery of the inner mind. So he says that through the mastery of these channels and the way he understands appearances, then that mastery is like writing ink on the paper of life. Anyway, it's just to say, my friends, Dharma practice in all of its formality is something excellent. It really does help. And over the last 40 years, I've seen the benefit of people who really knuckle down and do it. There are good results. But in the end, in the end, it's a means to an end where your heart is open and the whole world is your book. Everyone's Buddha. Everyone's your friend. Everywhere is a pure land. Please, let's never forget that. So, I'd, let's, let me read you a more formal translation of Milarepa's song. In the Buddha Mandala of my own body resides the deity, the essence of the Tathagatas of the three times, the blessing of being without craving for things of the senses, makes offering to this inner essence of the Tathagatas day and night. 
though lacking outer offerings to present, I'm quite satisfied. Through recognizing as primordial wisdom the six types of beings, possessing the Buddha nature in this divine palace of the self-born three realms, wherever I stay is a celestial palace. Whomever I befriend is the Yidam deity, and whatever I do is Dharmakaya. Though lacking shrine objects, I'm quite satisfied. Applying the ink of great primordial wisdom to the paper of the red and white external manifestation, letters of the five senses are written manifesting as anything whatsoever and recognized as Dharmakaya. Though lacking texts with their black letters, I'm quite satisfied. In general, beings of the three realms possess Tathata, and realization of that is measureless. By applying my teacher's profound advice on this, there is never separation from the three kayas, and meditation experience is excellent. In the end, when death comes, I'll be exuberant. Okay, friends, let's be exuberant. See you soon.